Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. We back once again with another Bible study that's very important and very meaningful. Uh, today, we're going to do stick with the one word Bible studies. All right. Today, the topic is covetousness. And for those who don't know what that is, we're going to explain biblically what it is. We're going to get into the word of Yah. We're going to explain to, to you what coveting is and how dangerous it is to covet. All right. And usual, as they did, by the ancestors did back in the day, we started our Bible studies off with, uh, in the synagogue, they started off with the Shema. We're going to say the Lord's Prayer and we're going to dive right in because this could help someone out there. All right. Let's stretch out our hands forth and be ready to receive the word. Shema, Yasharala, Ahaya. Alahaya Nawa Ahaya Akah. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Abanawa Shaba Shemayim Kodesh Haya Shemka Ahaya Malakwatka Tabaa Ratazaman Ka Haya Isha Ba Arataza Kawa Haya Ba Shemayim Latunla Nawa Lacham Ka wayam wa salak na wa cha waf na wa ka sa wak na wa ka sa ya na wa wala a taba a na na wa ba nas wayam abal hawas na wa man ra ka ya lak ka ha malakwath wa ha ala wa ha ta parath la alanyam aman. All right, today's topic of the week is covetedness and without further ado here we're going to jump right in to this bible study because this is very important to someone who's doing it and not aware and some that's doing it aware that need to be aware to stop doing this one thing called covenant it is the 10th commandment so what we're going to do first is we're going to go to first precept we're going to go to Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to read it. This is the 10th commandment. And it says, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servants, nor his female servants, nor his oxen, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. So, Let's get off into our commentary and find out what covetedness means. So we know it's a commandment not to covet, right? So now we're going to get in it, into it. And it's a lot of people that's falling short with this. All right? So let's dive right into our commentary. And we're going to kick off our Bible study with this. Today's topic, covetedness. First bullet point. So now we've we've already been made aware that uh, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 17 tells us not to covet. Our neighbor, our neighbor's wife, his male and female servants, his animals, or anything that our neighbor has. Okay? We're not to do it. So we're going to get down into the sub word of covetedness today. We're going to get it all broke down so that everybody can be an understanding. If you're doing it, I pray that you stop. Because this is a commandment that the Most High said not to do. All right? First bullet point. Covetedness is an insatiable desire. A word inside of a word. Desire to find fulfillment. Meaning and purpose in things instead of Yah. Instead of the Most High. It is an insatiable desire. Remember that word because we're going to really, really get into that word desire today during this Bible study. It is an insatiable desire to find fulfillment, meaning, and purpose in things instead of Yah. Also, an insatiable desire for worldly gain. See, you have people that fit in 
each one of these categories. And covetousness is also the strong desire to have that which belongs to another. So you got three categories here. You got the desire to find fulfillment, meaning, and purpose in material things instead of y'all. You have a column for that. These kind of people fall into this column. Right? Then you have a column where it's a desire for worldly gain. You know, always want recognition. This and that. And you're, hey, hey, look at me. Da, 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 da. And then you have another column. Coveting is also a strong desire to have that which belongs to another. So you want what another person has. But here's the thing. People fail to realize this one thing. First of all, favor amongst Yah's people, chosen person or slash people, is not fair. You don't know what that person does or doing to even have that. Some people that have a nice home, they work in 18, 19 hours a day, two, three jobs. Not saying that they doing this to keep up with the Joneses, but you know what? The Most High says, do business until he return. You know? And then you have some people that's just constantly seeking higher education and higher things, and they're counseling out the Most High. You see, remember Matthew 6 and 33. I know I'm branching off for a minute here, but today is a very, very important Bible study. And I pray that everybody get this about this covetedness, a.k.a. this desire to want things that others have, the fulfillment in having material things instead of Yah, and then the other one. You see? You have what the Most High say you have. Matthew 7 and 7 also says, Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Who are you asking? Or are you coveting your neighbor, or your friend, or a family member? Seek, and you shall find. Are you seeking for the answer to that question, or to the answer for your needs through the word of God? Not. Nah. And the door shall be open. This is a precept. Can we honestly look in the mirror and say, are we doing these three things that Christ told us to do in order to receive? You can want all you want something or covet something somebody else wants. That doesn't mean you're going to get it. Or you can put material things above the word. And then at the end of the day, the end game is fail. Nothing's going to work. Matthew 6 and 33, but seek first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. This is a precept that you should meditate on and memorize, not covet. Let's learn together today. Back to the commentary. May step on some toes, feet, ankle, and knock some people over today. But let me tell you. Shout out like a trumpet. Let it be known. Because some people, if you don't teach it, they won't know it because they won't pick up their Bible to read it for themselves. So the Most High has put some of us in charge of teaching the word. Okay, now let's go back over the three categories once again. Covetedness is an insatiable desire, remember that word, to find fulfillment, meaning, and purpose in things instead of y'all. One category. Also an insatiable desire for worldly gain, another category. Covetedness is also the strong desire to have that which belongs to another. 
It is considered to be very a very grievous offense in the Bible. Now, let's take a look at the word a little bit further in the Strong's Dictionary here. One moment. In the Strong's Dictionary, so we can get a little bit more meaning to the definition. Okay? One moment. Let me pull up my screen here. Get it ready for you. Okay. Here we go. So now, that first number is going to be, in the Greek, 4123. So, once again, let's type it in here. Let's get a picture to the top. We're going to switch it to the New King James Version. And we're going to go to the Greek, G4123. Now, listen to this. This is how you pronounce it during the Greek. Covetedness. Strong's G4123, Pleonectes. One moment. Okay. Got to switch my sound. I'm sorry. I knew it was something I forgot to do here. One moment. Here we go. Devil is a liar. We got it. We're going to teach this today. Here we are. Strong's G, 4123. Pleonectase. 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 All right. In the Greek. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this. All right. The outline of biblical literature is one. Eager to have more, especially what belongs to others. Two, greedy of gain, covetous. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to break this word down in several different directions today on how it could be very deadly and it could cause grave consequences to your life by being covetous. That's why it's a commandment. All right. Now, let's look at the definition. Go down a little bit further here. Holding, in parentheses, desiring more, ego for gain, varicious, varicious, hence a defrauder. Covetous. Hold on to that right there. Now, let's get back to the commentary over here. And we're going to break down that word here. Here we go. One moment. A very issues. Having or showing an extreme greed for wealth or material gain. It's all part of covetedness. Today, I got tons of examples out of the Bible that being a covetous person sunk these people into more sin and to in a bad predicament. That's why it's a commandment, Exodus chapter 20, verse 17, for us not to do so. Now, let's take a look in the, in the Strongs again. Now, 4123 Remember that, what that was about. All right, so now let's go to the, to the next word here. One moment. Let's go to the next Greek number. Let's go back to the Strong's. One moment. This is Bible study. We are studying. So 4123, one eager to have more, especially what belongs to others. You see, that's that category, covetedness, greedy of gain. That's that second category. But now when you go down here and read the strong definition, holding desire more eager for gain, avaricious, hence a defrauder. Hmm. There's another word. Now, let's look it up again in the Greek, 4124. One moment. Hang on one second. 41, 24. All right. 
Now, here's the one that I want you to really pay close attention to. Strong's G, 4124, play a Noxia. Play a Play a Now, remember that word desire? Outline of biblical use is one. Greedy desire to have more. Covetedness, a variance. You see, precept upon precept, line upon line here, a little there, a little. All of these precepts, all of these words go together. Just like the spirits do when they enter a person. See, covetedness, covetedness brings other spirits along with them. They got friends. Just like our precepts have friends, the spirit realm has friends too in the darkness. And if you're a covetous person, that's not all you are. You're more to go along with that because they all interact with each other. So now look at this. The strong definition of errance, fraudulency, extortion, practices, greediness. You see, these are the three columns that we just defined in the first bullet point. Covetedness. Tenth commandment. Let's read it again. Exodus chapter 20. I want you to understand this is a commandment not to be this way. We're going to break it down here today. Someone needs to hear this. Now, verse 17 says, You should not covet your neighbor's house, nor shall you covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male servants, nor his female servants, nor his oxen, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Covet. Covetous. Covetedness. Now let's dive in and move forward. We have more here today. One moment. Back to the commentary. So now that we all know the Greek we didn't look at it in the Strong's. We know what the Greek pronunciation is. A variousius, having a showing an extreme greed for wealth or material gain. All right, moving forward. There's that word again. You see, covetedness and desire goes together. So we're going to break down this word desire. A.K.A. covetedness. A.K.A. as you can see here in the commentary, lust. You see? All of these are friends that hang out with each other. Desire. First section we're going to take a look at. Bullet point. Desire means a strong yearning. However, some desires are destructive. And these the Bible call lust. These desires are shown as cravings for uh, satisfaction for the physical appetite. For example, food, alcohol, sex, money, pleasure. Desire, that's that word again, is also seen in the context with power. Some have a passion to be number one, to compete, to dominate, to assert their will, and to have control. Tell me, this is not so. We all know people that do this. And if you have the spirit of discernment, now you know what that is. It's in the desire, a.k.a. covetedness. Now, such an attitude produces envy and contention. Others pursue possessions and the glory associated with with owning them. They also include passions of pride, social status, and inordinate ambition. Let's take a look at a precept here. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5. Another word that we can put under the list for covetedness is idolatry. Let's take a look at the precept. Colossians chapter 3. In verse 5, we're going to read it together. Colossians 3 and 5. 
Now listen to this. Let's start with verse 1 so you can understand what we're saying here. Colossians 3 verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Stop right here. Seek those things which are above, not the things, the material things that you can get from life. Or covet things worldly, or covet things that other people have. If you have your mind on things above, you don't have time to be a covetous person. Let's read it together. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of Yah. Set your mind on things, not on things on the earth. Set your mind on things above, not on things on the earth. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in Yah. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You see, I'm going to stop right there before I read verse 5. When Christ returned and you are living according to his way and you surrender to the will of Yah, you're going to be with him in glory because you are one of his. So which means when he returns, He's coming to get you and take you, yeah, you, with him. It's okay to abide by the rules. We'll abide by the world rules when we drive, when our children go to school. We pay our bills on time because they say so. So why can't we keep our mind on things above so that when Christ returns, we're able to be with him for eternity. No one has to covet anything from anyone. Because the Most High is no perspective of a person. If he's done it for that person, he can do it for you. Matthew 7 and 7 acts, seek and knock. See, today we're seeking the definition of covetedness. And it's a commandment. Of something not to do and not to be a covenant person. So now verse 5 says. Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication. Uncleanliness. Passion. Evil desires. And covetedness which is idolatry. You see all the friends? Do you see all the friends that come with covetedness? A.K.A. idolatry. A.K.A. an evil desire. A.K.A. fornication. A.K.A. uncleanliness. Passion. All of these combined, they go together. They're all friends. Let's read it again. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 says, Therefore put to death your members which are on the earth. Fornication uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetedness, which is idolatry. Verse 6, because of these things, the wrath of Yah is coming upon the sons of disobedient, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. So, verse 6 says, because of these things, the wrath of Yah is is coming upon the sons of disobedience. If you're being covetous, unclean, having evil desires, to have what others want, passion, uncleanness, the wrath of Yah is coming upon you. And who is able to stand? No one. Let's move forward here. Got quite a bit to cover today. This is Bible study. Not church. We dissect the precepts. We get into the word of God. And we learn. So that we get better. Seeking salvation through his word. Colossians 3 and 5 instructs what? A desire taken beyond what is lawful is simply what? Idolatry. 
It's all it is. Idolatry. Now, sticking with that word, off the record here, let's turn back to Exodus chapter 20, where the commandments are. One moment. Let me read something to you here. Exodus 20. Let's go verse uh, verse 2 verse uh, 4 you should not make for yourselves a carved image any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth you should not bow down to them nor serve them for I am for I the Lord your God am a jealous God Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to a thousand to those who love me and keep my commandments. So, if you practice covetedness, aka idolatry, he's telling you that he's a jealous God. And once again, what this does is what parents and people don't understand is this. If you're doing it, you're going to pass it down to your children. They're going to go through the same thing, being covetous. Remember, see, it says upon the third and fourth generations. Because when you do this, you're showing that you hate Yah. The first, the second, the first commandment is, you shall have no other gods before me. So if you've been coveted this world again, let's go back to the top here. I'm trying to give you an example how serious this is. So if you're desiring meaning fulfillment and purpose in things, you see, that's having a God before him. If you're having a strong desire to have something another one have, that's idolatry, that's having a God before him. If you also consider a worldly gain, purposeful things, and having things which other people have, this is all idolatry. And it's an idol, idolatry, putting that before the word of Yah. And this is the first commandment. You shall have no other God before me. It's just that simple. It's called understanding. Praying for understanding of the word. Okay, let's get back to it. Right now, first section is desire. Next bullet point. So Colossians 3 and 5, it instructs us that a desire is taken beyond what is lawful is simply idolatry. It's an idol. You're making it a little God, a little G God. You see, first commandment. Have no other God before the Most High. Second bullet point. Yah's words show that not every desire is wrong. Let's take a look at it in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4 verses 5 through 9. Let's take a look at it here. Proverbs 4, 5 through 9. Let's read it here. Now. This is what we should be getting. Verse 4. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. This is wisdom. And she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom and in all you're getting get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. Verse 9. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Now, another study for a different time, but here's one of the precepts that you go to to let you know that wisdom is a she, and wisdom is also the Ruach HaKadosh, a.k.a. the Holy Spirit. 
there doing creation. Feminine. We're going to get into that on another Bible study. You see? Back to the commentary here. Today we're talking about covetedness. All right? So now, the word of Yah shows that not every desire is wrong. So what does, what does Proverbs 4, 5 through 9 tell you? In the beginning, it tells you to what? Get wisdom, get understanding. Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away the words from my mouth. Do not forsake her and she will preserve you. Moving forward. It is no sin to desire knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. This is what the Most High wants us to desire. Not worldly gain. Not what other people have. You see? And not the fulfillment of things in place of Him. Being covetous. Because I can use the word covet, covetedness, desire, lust, AKA all of that because it all adultery, all of these words go together. So in some instances, if I don't say covetedness and I say desire or lust or adultery, it all means the same. Let's keep moving. Yah's law is to be more desired than much fine gold. Precept time. Dun, 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 dun. This is what we should be desiring. Not worldly gain. Not fulfillment of things, material things instead of Yah. And not what other people have. We should desire his law more than gold. Psalms 19 and 10. Let's get there. Precept time. Psalm 19 verse 10 says, more to be desired are they than gold. Yeah, much, yeah, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb, honeycomb. So instead of desiring worldly things, fine things, jewelry, this and that and the other, we should desire Yah more. That's what it says. Here's the precept. More to be desired. This is his law. It says, more to be desired are they than gold. Yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. We're supposed to desire the law, not things. Remember, Matthew 6 and 33 but seek first the kingdom of Yah. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Very simple principle. Very simple precept. Seek first the kingdom. Not riches. Worldly gain. And what other people have. Moving forward. Like I said, some toes are going to be stepped on today, but it's very necessary. We have to learn this because some people can't move forward in the ministry, can't move forward in life because they're worried about what everybody else is doing. That's not the way we follow Christ. Okay, next bullet point. Now, here's the word lust. And we're going to go back to the strong definition on this. Next bullet point. The word translated lust in Matthew 5 and 28. Let's go there first. Let's go to Matthew 5 and 28. And let's read it. Then we'll move forward with the commentary. Matthew 5 and verse 28. 28 says, but I say to you that whoever lust looks at a woman to lust for her has a lie already committed adultery with her in his heart. So now we're going to look at the heart situation to the whole part of the desire, 
the covetousness, the lust, and the idolatry. See how it all comes together? Now here's that word lust. Using an example of a man looking at a woman. He's already done it in his heart. It means to set one's heart upon. Let's take a look at it in the dictionary here. Uh, in the Greek, 1937. One moment here. Let's put it up here. Let's type it in at the top. By the way, this app is free. And it's a good Bible study too. 1937. Okay, here we go. All right, let's listen to it in Greek. Strong's G, 1937. Epithumeo. 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 Now let's scroll down. There we go. To the Bible usage. To turn upon a thing. To have a desire for, there's the word again, to desire, to lust after, covet, see, all those words go together, of those who seek things forbidden. Lust, forbidden, idolatry, desire, covet, covetousness, covetous. All of those go together. Now, let's go down and read the Strong's definition here about the heart thing. To set the heart upon, long for, covet, desires, with fame, lust after. You see? Covetousness, lust after. Wanting something that someone else have, lust after. Because it's in the heart. Seeking worldly gain. Lusting after things of the world. Seeking after material things instead of Yah. Lusting after material things that the world can provide instead of the Most High. Instead of seeking first the kingdom. All of these words coincide with each other. This is the point that I'm making today about being covetous. Covetedness. It's the 10th commandment. If it was not dangerous, it would not be a commandment. Let's move forward here. One moment. Let's get back to the commentary. Here we go. Now, the word translated lust in Matthew 5 and 28 but I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Okay? <clears throat> That's what that means. One moment. <laughs> All right? So he's already lust, desire. All of these go together. Covet, covetedness. All of these words go together once again. Let's keep moving. When the object desired is beyond the reach of the admirer, when admiration becomes a desire to get, the commandment is broken. Let me read that last part one more time. When the object desired is beyond the reach of the admirer, which is the covetor. When admiration becomes a desire to get, I got to have it. The commandment is broken. The 10th commandment is broken. It's broken. So, as you can see, Colossians 3 and 5, that desire taken beyond what is lawful is simply idolatry. These are the things that once we learn them, we have to pray about. In that room, with the door closed, secretly to the Most High. Don't be ashamed. 
if you've been covetous to someone or you want something that somebody else got or or, 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 or you seeking this for recognition, for worldly gain, or you seeking material things instead of, hey, confess it. Repent of it. Pray about it. And ask the Most High to help you. And this is how we pray. Off the record. Turn with me to Matthew 6 and 6. I'm already here. Wow. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's read Matthew 6 and 6. But you, this is what Christ, example that Christ gave before he gave the model prayer. So if you battling, if you struggling with this covetedness and you struggling with striving to get things of the world instead of the word, he gave you instruction on how to pray, how to go by doing it and where to do it at. Now listen to this. Verse five. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5, it says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. You having a problem with covetedness? And you recognize it now that you're watching this video? Like, subscribe, and share if you like, so someone else can get these precepts and get in the truth. This is what he told you not to do and he's telling you where to go to pray. Right? Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Verse 6. But you, whenever you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. You see? This is what I do on a daily basis. I don't deal with the person, the spirit that's using the person. You know what I do? I do this. But you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in, in, in the secret place. And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. So what have we learned? Find that place in your home. Go to it on a daily basis. Fall to your knees with the door closed. No one's in there but you and the Father. Lay it all down at the foot of his throne. Father, I have a problem with blank, 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 blank. I looked across the street and I saw this nice shiny truck that my neighbor had and now I want one. Or I went to a friend's house, they just closed on a house and man, I'm so jealous, I want one. It's called covetedness. If you're having that problem, the most I already told you what to do when you pray Go into that room. First of all, confess your sin to one another. Talk to somebody about it. And then go to your father in secret. And I guarantee you, that sin of covetedness, being a covetous man or woman, will leave you. You will no longer seek the gain of the world. The gain of Fulfillment of material things instead of the word and the, and, the, and, the, and the gain to have what others have. You know what you're going to be seeking then? The kingdom and his righteousness. And all those things that you see others have or desire to have will be yours. This is the principle of acts seeking and knocking you must first get understanding why would the most high open the door and you being covetous and you have no understanding of what that is and what that mean and what you're doing and you never repented of it so why would he open up the door for you to do that when you don't have an understanding 
He says, in all you're getting, get understanding. And it's okay to ask for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's what he wants you to ask for. Not things of this world. Not things that other people have. But wisdom. Because if you have her, you will have all those things. And while you ask for her, she's going to give you understanding to go with it. Because all three of those come together. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So if you're struggling today, people, with the sin of covetedness, I encourage you to go into that room. Swallow your pride. Yeah, you. Swallow your pride and go into that room and close the door. And fall to your knees and pray to your father. And lay it all out on the line. I have a problem with this, Father. That only you can help me. I've read your precepts. I've read Matthew 6 and 6. And I've done all that you told me to do. Christ gave me an instruction to go in that room and shut the door. And here I am. I humble myself and I surrender my will to yours. And you will be a different person when you leave that room. Let's move forward because we got some examples of covetedness and how if you continue to dabble with it, it gets worse. All right. Now, let's move to section two. Here we go. Section two are the examples of desires, because remember, we could use covetedness, lust, idolatry, desires. We can use all of this. We can use and one of those words to get our point across on covetedness today. Examples of desires leading to more sin. This is why it's the 10th commandment. Don't do it. Because the longer you sit in it, the worse it's going to get. Now, I got a couple examples here. And we're going to read them out of the Bible. You see? This is why you can confess that covetous sin one to another because it's not the first time a person has struggled with it. We're getting wisdom, knowledge, and understanding how to deal with it today through these examples. And also through these examples, you see what happened when you keep dabbling with it. It leads to more sin. More buddies is going to come with him. Number one. Akan desired silver, gold, and a beautiful Babylon garment. Let's turn to Joshua. Chapter 7, verse 10 through 26. Got a few examples today. We actually, let's start with verse 10 over here. So now this is the sin of Akan. All right. His desire for this Silver, gold, and a beautiful Babylon garment messed them all up. Now, as I read this to you, do me a favor. And I'm going to vividly read this to you. Close your eyes and put yourself there with a con. Has this been me? Desiring this, 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 and this. And I just got to have it. But when you get it, it led you to do other things. Right? No visuals today. All word from the Bible. And I pray that you follow with me here. All right? So Joshua chapter 7 verse 10, the first example where the desire led to more sin is about Akan when he wanted silver gold and he just had to have this Babylonian garment Let's read what happened. Joshua chapter 7, verse 10. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why do you lie thus on your face? Israel has sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have 
even taken some of the accused things and have both stolen and deceived. And they have so also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy, destroy the accursed from among you. So there was some stuff in the temple they was not supposed to touch, was not supposed to take, but they took it and they mixed it among their things because they desired it so much. Right? Verse 13, this is the most I speak to Joshua, get up and go talk to your people and let them know where they're wrong. Verse 13, get up, sanctify the people and say, sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. Because thus says the Lord God of Israel, there, there is an accused thing in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand therefore before your enemies until you take away the accused thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come according to the families. And the family which the Lord takes shall come by the households. And the household which the Lord takes shall come man by man. So Joshua sent the message to each tribe. They lined up. Here's your chance to come clean. Who did it? Let's keep reading. Verse 15. Then it shall be that he who is taken with the accused, the, the thing shall be burned with fire. Let me read that again. This was serious. Verse 15. Then it shall be that he who is, who is taken with the accused, be that he is taken with the accused, things shall be burned with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has done a disgraceful thing in Israel. Now listen to this. Verse 16. So Joshua rose early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. He brought the clan of Judah, and he took to the family of the Zarites, and he brought the family of the Zarites, man by man. And Zabdi was taken. Then he brought his household, but man by man. And Akah, the son of Carmi, and son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. Now Joshua said to Akan, my son, I beg you. Give glory to the Lord, Yah of Israel. And make confession to him. And tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. See, the Most High knew what he had done already. Do not hide it from me. You desired these things. You went in there and you did something that you had no business. Covetedness. You just had to have it, right? Listen up. Now Joshua said to Achan, my son, I beg you, give glory to the Lord God of Israel and make confession to him and tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered, answered Joshua and said, indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel. And this is what I have done. When I saw among the spores of beautiful Babylon garment, 200 sickles of silver and a wedge of gold, 50 when 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. And there they are, hidden in the earth in the midst of my tent with the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran to the tent. And there it was, hidden in his tent with the silver under it. And they took them from the midst of the tent, brought them to Joshua and to all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. Then Joshua and all the Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkey, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them to the valley of Achar. And Joshua said, 
Why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. Oh my goodness. So all Israel stoned him with stones and they burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Verse 26. Then they raised over him a great heap of stones still there to this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Therefore, the name of the, that place has been called the Valley of Anchor, a car to this day. Now listen. Akan's desire, his covetedness, was not to touch anything. The most I already knew who took it. But it led him into a deeper sin and look all the people that had to suffer. Let's go back to it. Let's go all the way back to verse 24. Then Joshua and all Israel with him. Can you imagine that tribe, that family surrounded by the whole tribe of Judah? Each person with a stone in their hand. Akan, his wife, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his tent, all that he had surrounded him with stones, stoned him and then burned him. You see why you don't play with Yah? And see why you don't play with the Most High? Because his word is true. One, he said, has no other God before me. He desired that silver, that gold, and that Babylonian garment so bad that it caused him and everything he had, family, animals, and all, to die. Covetedness is serious business. It's the desire of something that takes you to the point that you're lusting for it. You feel like you can't live without it. Trying to live someone else's life. Akan wanted to wear this beautiful silver and gold in this garment that the Babylonians wear. And they wore to the point that he lusted after that he just had to take it. And it caused him and all of his things and his sons and his daughters and his animals, their lives. This is how important that 10th commandment is. Don't do it. If you being a covetous person, repent, turn, change, teshuvah in the Hebrew. Don't do it anymore. That's the first example. Now, let's move forward to the second example. You see, we lead by example. So now we know what happened to Akan, what not to do. Example number two. Abimelech desired the prestige of the throne, and he murdered 70 times to get it. So, desiring, a.k.a. coveting, a.k.a. being co covetous man, a.k.a. covetedness for the throne made him go deeper and deeper and deeper into sin. He murdered 70 times to get it. Let's pull out the story. Let's go to the book of Judges. I'm giving you some examples here today because this is important. There's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Now, Judges chapter 9 and verses 1 through 5. Let's read it. Here's the second example. Abimelech and his conspiracy for the throne. And he'll do whatever it takes to get it. So, Abimelech 
the son of Jerubbabel, went to Shechem to his mother's brothers and spoke with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father, saying, Please speak in the hearing of all the men of Shechem, which is better for you, that all seventy of the sons of Jeroboam reign over you, or that one reign over you? It's a question. Remember that I am your own flesh and bone. Verse 3. And his mother's brother spoke all of these words concerning him in the hearing of all the men of Shechem, and their heart was inclined to flow to follow Abimelech. For they said, He is our brother. So they gave him seventy shekels of silver from the temple of Baal Barith, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless men, and they followed him. Then he went to his father's house at Ophrah and killed his brothers. Let me read that again. Then he went to his father's house at Oprah and killed his brothers, the 70 sons of Jeroboam, on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son in Jeroboam, was left because he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together, all of Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king beside the terebinth tree at the pillar that was in Shechem. So he desired the throne so bad that he killed everybody that was in line for the throne. He coveted it. He desired the throne so bad that he killed 70 times to get it. Example number two. How being a covetous person or covetedness can lead you deeper into sin. And this is what we study in today. Covetedness. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get the word out. You know, sometimes the truth hurt. But the truth is necessary. So we're going to deliver the truth through these biblical examples today. There's more. The third example. I think everybody knows this one. Number three, David desired Bathsheba leading to adultery and then murder. Let's read the story. Let's take time and desire the word of God today through these examples. Let's not look at our watches or, you know, I got to get off because this and that and the other. Let's take the time and seek first the kingdom today on covetedness. Number three, here's another example. Most people know this story. Most people know the story about uh, King David desiring Bathsheba when he saw her taking a bath over there naked. This was Uriah's wife. What does the 10th commandment say not to do? Covet your neighbor's wife, right? Listen to what it made David do. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 1 through 27. Close your eyes and picture this. It happened in the spring of the year. At the time when the kings go out to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the people Amnon and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. Then it happened one evening that David arose from his bed and walked on the roof of the king's house. Of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman bathing. And the woman was very beautiful to behold. So David sent and inquired about the woman. And someone said, Is that not Bathsheba? the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Then David sent messengers and took her, and she came to him, and he lay with her. Covetedness led to adultery. 
Listen to the story. Then David sent messages and took her, and she came to him, and he laid with her, for she was cleansed from her impurity, and she returned to her house. And the woman conceived. She got pregnant. So she sent and told David and said, I am with child. Then David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite, her husband. And Joab sent Uriah to David. When Uriah had come to him, David asked how Joab was doing and how the people were doing and how the war was proposed. Purpose. Prospered. And David said to Uriah, go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah departed from the king's house and a gift of food from the king followed him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, little Leo. And did not go down to his house. So when they told David saying. Uriah did not go down to his house. David said to Uriah. Did you not come from a journey? Why did you not go down to your house? And Uriah said to David. The ark and, the ark and Israel and Judah. Are dwelling in tents. And my lord Joab. Little Leo. And the servants of my lord. Are encamped. In the open fields. Shall I then go to my house and eat and drink and lie with my wife? As you live, as your soul lives, I will not do this thing. You see, he was watching over his men out there in the field. While King David was sleeping with his wife. So he coveted his wife. He desired Bathsheba to the point where it led to idolatry. And now she's with child. So now... David is trying to figure out a way, oh man, to get rid of this man. David's the king. Uriah is part of the army. Let's keep reading. Then David said to Uriah, wait here today also and tomorrow. I will let you depart. So Uriah remained in Jerusalem that day and the next. Now when David called him, he ate and drank before him and he made him drunk. And that evening he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his, of his lord, little Leo, but he did not go down to his house. In the morning it happened that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by hand, by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, set Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle. Oh man, this low down. And retreat from him that he may be struck down and die. So it was, while Joab besieged the city, that he assigned Uriah to a place where he knew there were valiant men. Then the men of the city came out and fought with Joab, and some of the people of, ser of the servants of David fell, and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war and charged the messenger, saying, when you have finished, finish telling the matters of the war to the king. If it happens to the king, wrath rises and he says to you, what did you approach so near to the city when you fought? Why did you approach so near to the city when you fought? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who struck Abimelech, the son of Jerebedesh? Was it not a woman who cast a piece of millstone from her wall so that he died, Thabes? Why did you go near the wall? Then you shall say, your servant Uriah the Hittite died also. We can stop right there with verse 21. So here's the example of that deep desire, that coveting, covet, covetedness, being a coveted person. David wanted this woman. He desired Bathsheba. He had already slept with her. She was with child. Uriah, her husband, is out in the battle fighting for the city. And this is what your king is doing to you because he desire lust for this woman. 
for this beautiful woman that he saw on the rooftop taking a bath. Wanting what another person has. Uriah the Hittite is married to Bathsheba, but she's beautiful. He's gone all the time, so David took her for himself. So it led from covetedness to idolatry to murder. David put this man on the front line to be killed. Sample number three. David and Bathsheba and Uriah, the Hittite. There's more. Very good Bible study today. Everybody know about King Ahab and Jezebel, right? Well, here's the story where he desired a vineyard of Naboth. And it led him and Jezebel to compound that sin by lying and then taking Yah's name in vain and then murder. So these are examples where being covetous, covetedness leads you deeper and deeper into sin. Tenth commandment, folks. Facts, not opinion. Now let's read the story. Let's turn to 1 Kings. In case if you haven't read it, let's read it together. 1 Kings chapter 21. Let's get you started. 1 through 19. King Ahab, king of Judah, and Jezebel. Everybody knows about Ahab and Jezebel. They know about Jezebel and the prophet and how evil she was. All right. Uh, First Kings chapter 21, almost there. Verse 1 through 19. Now, Ahab wanted this vineyard desired. Let's continue to use that word. Desired this vineyard so bad. He lusted after this vineyard so bad that he killed Naboth. Naboth. Let's read the story. Verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 1 through 19. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the palace of King of Ahab, king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it is near, next to my house. And for it I will give you a vineyard better than, than it. Or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I give that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. But Naboth, Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. So Ahab went into his house, sullen and displeased because of the word of Naboth to Jezreel, had spoken to him, for he had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my father. And he lay down in his bed and turned away his face, and would not eat no food. I mean, covenant this vineyard, desired this vineyard to the point where, you know what? It took my appetite to this man and told me, no, you can't have it. It's mine. Right? Moving forward. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said to him, why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food? Come that woman. Here come the darkness in the room. Verse 6. He said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth, the Jez 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 Jezreelite, and he said and, and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. Then Jezebel, his wife, said to him, you now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give the vineyard to, 
I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So now, the plot then been from King Ahab on it, now Jezebel on it. And everybody knows how evil she is. This is why he told her. Verse number eight. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent the letters to the elders and the nobles who were dwelling in the city of Naboth. She wrote in the letter saying, See two men, scoundrels, before him to bear witness against him, saying, You have blasphemed Yah and the king. Then take him out and stone him that he may die. Wow. So the men of this of, of his city, the elders and the nobles of the inhabitants of the city, did as Jezebel has, had sent to do, as it was written in the letters which she had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated now above with high honor among the people. And two men, scoundrels, came in and sat before him, and the scoundrels witnessed against him, against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. Then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones so that he died. Then they sent Jezebel saying, sent to Jezebel saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. Over a vineyard? You coveting, coveting, what somebody had, you want it just because it's right beside you and you feel like you can have it. So you tell your evil wife about it and you know what she gonna do, draw blood. And she did. So you see how dangerous this is, brothers and sisters? Wanting what other people have. Worldly gain. Wanting material things of the world instead of the things which are above. This is the point that the word is making today, not me. Look past his face. Shema, o Israel. Listen. Hear. Listen to these examples. If you are a covetous person, person go into that room shut the door talk to your father about it and you ask him if it's anything anything that is not of you that is residing in this temple take it out begin to deal with it Father Yahuwah. And he will. That's the fourth example. King Ahab, Jezebel. Jezebel didn't even have nothing to do with the vineyard. But because her feet quick to run to do evil. Oh, my husband laying on the bed. He won't eat. What's wrong, darling? Oh, uh, well, Naboth would not give me the. He would not give me the land. I'm upset. I told him I'll get him another one. He said, no. My feelings are hurt. Jezebel said, not a problem. This is a job for da, 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 Mrs. Evil. She went out, found two scoundrels to bear false witness against him and put a whole bunch of people in front of him. You blaspheme against God and the king, stone him. And they did. Tenth commandment. Covetedness. Don't do it. Moving forward. All praises to the most high. Section number three. Section number three. Almost done here. We can do several things to help against evil desires 
of our human nature. So what can we do? What does the Bible say we can do to not be this way? Number one. Recognize that human beings have an unstable, insatiable nature. Know that it's in our blood to do what is wrong. You have to really pray, fast, meditate, study the word to walk in righteousness. Because it's our human nature. Ecclesiastes 1 and 8. Let's turn there real quick. One moment, right out the Proverbs. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 8. We're going to roll through these here pretty quickly. Listen to this. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. This is the human nature. You want what you see and you want what you hear. Now, bullet point. Do not be deceived. Happiness is a fruit of true spirituality. Yah has not put the power into anything material to satisfy man's spiritual needs. So you're not going to find it in a vineyard. You're not going to find it in another man's wife. What were the other examples here? Let's go back to, you're not going to find it in number four, the vineyard. You're not going to find it in another man's wife. You're not going to find it in the prestige of, of being in charge of, or, or the throne. And you're not going to find it through silver, gold, and a beautiful garment. True happiness does not come that way. Happiness is a fruit of true spirituality. And the only way you can get it is right here. Right here. Getting into Yah's word. Getting what? Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Then all that's going to come. Happiness and everything to go along with it. All right. Number one, recognize that human beings have an unstable, insatiable nature. All right. Number two, seek y'all first. Precept. Let's go to Luke. You see, Matthew wasn't the only one to say, seek first the kingdom. Let's go to Luke 12 and 15 and also 31. Luke 12. One moment. I love flipping one page at a time. Luke 12 and 15. No visuals today. This is all word. Now. Here it comes. Here comes the word. Seek y'all first. Number two, seek y'all first. Luke 12, 15 and 31. Verse 15. And he said to them, take heed and beware of covetedness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possess. Verse 31. But seek the kingdom of God. And all these things shall be added to you. Seek y'all first. Don't have to deal with the covetedness. Because here it is right here in the scripture. Beware of covetedness. Set your mind on things above, not on things on earth. We must purposefully, purposely, and deliberately study, fast, pray, and meditate. We must consciously sacrifice and discipline. But it fills the mind with the kind of thoughts that would eventually make us impossible to sin. So if you always got your mind on things above and not on things of this earth 
and not on what everybody else got and what everybody else doing, this and that and the other. You ain't going to have time to fall victim to this sin called covetedness. Christ said, beware of it. Don't do it. Number two, seek y'all first. Number three, hate covetedness, not things. Yeah, it's a precept on that. Proverbs chapter 28. Let's bring it out. Verse 15 and 16. Turn with me if you will. Proverbs 28, 15 and 16. Now, verse 15 says, like a roaring lion and a charging bear is a wicked ruler over poor people. A ruler who lacks understanding is a great oppressor, but he who hates covetedness will prolong his days. Facts, not opinion. Read it again. But he who hates covetedness, a.k.a. lust, evil desires, all it is, fall under that, will prolong his days. This is why it's a commandment. Observe what covetedness produces some sins are clearly understood but covenants is less easily observed requiring careful attention to comprehend to be very beginnings of many sins you see this is where a lot of sins start covetedness gave you four examples above here how it went from Covetedness to adultery, covetedness to murder, murder to this, that, and the other. It's very dangerous, brothers and sisters. And we have to pray that prayer that if it's anything that is anything that is not of you that is residing in this temple, I pray to the Most High that He take it out. And give me a heart of flesh and not of stone. That my ears are able to shemai. Receive and listen. Covetedness. Is the very beginning of many sins. Number four. Learn to be a cheer Learn to be cheerfully generous. Acts. Let's turn to a precept here. Moving forward, we're going to wrap up this Bible study on covetedness. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. Learn to be cheerfully generous. That's hard for a lot of people. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. Here we go. Right here, verse 35 says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. This is how you beat it. Because guess what? Everybody ain't going to be a giver like you. So they're not going to cover your ways. Because people don't like to give. We should keep in mind that there is no famine in heaven. No famine. Because our Father owns the earth and the fullness thereof. Which means everything. The trees that make the money. The trees that make the wood and the wood that you put together that make the banks that hold the money. There's no famine in heaven. Ask, seek, and knock. 
Break out of the natural fear that if you give something away, you won't have enough. Self-centeredness must be removed from our character. Selfishness. Last but not least, section number four. Now I want you to think about all of this that we about to teach right now, that I'm about to show you right now about America. And we can check it, that this is one covetous, coveting land. And I'm going to bring out the precept. I'm going to bring it out today. And I'm going to read something to you, and you tell me, is this America or not? The world, period. But mainly in America. Section number four, the attitude of a covetous America. Here we go. Let's bring it out. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 56. This is the last section. We're going to do our announcements, say a prayer. We're going to let you go for today. Turn with me to Isaiah. Chapter 56. Verses 9 through 12. Let's bring it down so I can read it to you here. Isaiah chapter 56, almost done. This is the attitude of America. That it was already been. Precept. It's right here. Prophecy. It's right here. Listen to this. Verse number nine. All you beasts of the field come to devour. All you beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Now I'm going to go through all of this once I finish reading it. Verse, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yes, they are all greedy dogs, which never have enough. And they are shepherds who cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for his own gain from his own territory. Come, one says, I will bring wine, and we will fill ourselves with intoxicating drink. Tomorrow we will be as today, and much more abundant. Who's that sound like? America. This is the attitude of America. His watchmen are blind. These pastors and preachers that's all here preaching prosperity, this and that and the other, uh, grace and, and all of this and da 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 and not teaching from the precept, not preaching from the word, standing up there on the podium with no Bible. His watchmen are blind. I want you to call in and give. Sow a seed and this going to happen. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. And they are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving the slumber. A lot of people want something for nothing. Don't want to put in the work. This is the attitude of America. I want what he wants. But I don't want to work for it. I wanted to do this here. Fall in my lap like a punt return in the NFL. The ball just fall out the sky. Bam. Right into your lap. Well, let's get into the attitude of America. They can't understand. This world and America is built on being coveted. Being covetous. The American dream, wanting what he, he, she, and they have. Let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the commentary in this last section here. Isaiah 56, 9 and 12, I just read it to you. Now, doesn't that sound like the attitude of America? Do these prophecies describe America? We are drowned in a constant barrage of advertisement. 
Our whole economy works to stimulate our desire for food, clothing, automobiles, furniture, jewelry, and travel. It is difficult to resist unless our focus is disciplined towards going in the right direction. And what direction is that? Seeking first the kingdom. Seek y'all first. You won't even be paying attention to those advertisements because you know what they are. They're called traps of the enemy. Make you covered to the point that you swallowed and you drowning in debt. Trying to have something that you know you can't afford. Yeah, yeah. I took a pause there because I want you to think about that. Being covetous. Now, moving forward. Because of these sins, Yah calls upon the nations, which we already know nations mean people, to devour his people. And my people know exactly what I'm talking about. If you shemai to Glory Light Ministries every week. The 12 tribes of Israel, two thirds of them are going to fall by the sword. Because they don't listen and because they're not trying to get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You're living for what? Coveting the world. Tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Simeon, Levi, Zebulon, Manasseh, Ephraim. Yeah, them 12 tribes. You know what I'm talking about. But especially Judah, a.k.a. modern-day Negroes, because of the sins, Yah calls upon his nations, his people, to devour his people. And that's exactly what's happening. Trying to have what this, 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 and this, this person got. Now you swallowed in debt. The leaders are just as blind to the nation's real need because instead of speaking out and acting upon moral issues, they're caught up with their own lust. Next bullet point. Another reason why covenants have the power to destroy is revealed in the credit purchasing system. Oh, yeah. You see, the Bible teaches all of that. Now, another reason why covetousness has the power to destroy is revealed in the credit purchasing system that dominates the American economy. Buying on credit is based on the idea of possessing something before you can afford it. But ask Yah in Jeremiah 6, 9 through 13, who will listen? Let's pull out the last precept of the day. Who will Shemai? Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah, chapter 9, chapter 6, verse 9 through 13. Thus says the Lord of hosts, let's pull this down here. We're almost done with the Bible study here. Thus says the Lord of hosts, they shall thoroughly glean as a vine, the remnant of Israel. See, you know the ones that's doing, following the law, statutes, and commandments. Because right here, thus says the Lord, they shall thoroughly gleam as a vine, the remnant of Israel. As a grape gathered, put in your hand back into the branches. Listen up. Verse 10. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Indeed, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot give heed. Behold, the word of the Lord is a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary of holding it in. I pour, I will pour it out on the children outside. 
and on the assembly of the young men together, for even the husband shall be taken with the wife, the age with him who is full of the days. Now we're talking about the end of the days. Now listen up. And their houses shall be turned over to others, fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord, because from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetedness. And from the prophet, even to the priest, everyone deals falsely. Now, this is a warning to America back in the book of Jeremiah 2,000 years ago or better. The fury of the Most High is against those who are being who are covetous. Let me read it to you one more time. Let's go back over here because you don't want to listen. People don't want to hear. They don't want to receive the word. Those examples that I gave you from the Bible today, they didn't want to hear. They didn't want to listen. And their sins became greater because of covetedness. Now, verse 10, to whom shall I speak and give warning? This is Jeremiah speaking, the prophet speaking, thus says the Lord. That they may not hear. Indeed, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot give heed. Behold, the word of the Lord is a reproach to them. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fear of the Lord. I am weary of holding it in. I will pour it out on the children outside, on the assembly of young men together. For even the husband shall be taken with the wife, the aged with him, the aged with him who is full of days, and their houses shall be turned over to others. Fields and wives together. For I stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord. Because from the least of them, even to the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetedness. And from the prophet, even to the priest, this is what's going to happen to America. The warning came a long time ago. The word of God says, who's going to listen and take heed? That remnant of Israel is the one. These are the ones that are preparing their selves spiritually, physically, and mentally. Famine is coming. War is coming. Death is coming. Disease is coming. Plagues are coming to this land. This is what the Bible says. Everyone is given to covetedness. It's the quote unquote, the American dream. The American lie is what it should be called. It's not a dream, it's a lie. Because me personally, I don't want anything Unless the most high give it to me. Period. If he give it to me. It's going to last. If the world gives it to me. It won't. So see this credit system. This credited covetous system. In America. It's only put here. To swallow you up in debt. Wanting what everybody else has. And wanting what you see on the advertisement. On the commercials. You have to have discipline. To not even pay that no mind. Let's move forward to close this out here. Now. Jeremiah chapter 6. Verse 9 through 13. Jeremiah asked the question. Who, who, who will listen? 
Who will take heed? Not that many, only a remnant. Only a remnant will take heed to the words that's written here in our instruction manual. Who will listen? People will not listen to wisdom as delaying a purchase to pay in cash to save money. They do not listen because their minds are on their sin. As you can see, covetedness motivates sin in many ways. Now, what have we covered today? Those three categories. The first one, desiring material things instead of Yah. One category. Second category, desiring things for worldly gain. And the third category, desiring what other people have. It's all sin. I'm going to leave you with this precept one more time. Make an announcement. And I'm going to end this Bible study just as they did in the synagogue, our ancestors back in the day, with prayer. Go back to Exodus chapter 20 and verse 17. Meditate on this verse. You shall not cover your neighbor's house. You should not cover your neighbor's wife. You should not cover your neighbor's, nor his male servants, nor his female servants, nor his oxen, his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. It's a command. Don't do it. It's a sin to do it. Ask for your own. Seek the answer how to get it through the word. Not, and it shall be given unto you. It's just that simple. Do not desire worldly things, material things, or what other people have. Covetedness was the one word biblical study for today. Announcements. www.glorylightministries.info I'd like everybody to go on there and take a look at the Enochian calendar. It is the true calendar at creation that I truly believe the Most High has led us to put on our website. Uh, it's there. You can purchase it. Uh, and it gives you the seven feast days. Uh, four in the spring, three in the, in the fall, and October is the next month of, of the next uh, feast days. But it also tells you how to, the, the true Sabbaths, It's not every Saturday. It's definitely not on a, every Sunday. When Yah created the world, he created seven days, not Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Day one through seven. 30 days interval through those. If this is interesting to you, and you would like to purchase this calendar so that you can serve and worship on the true day, Go on glorylightministries.info. Take a look at the Enochian calendar that we have there. We also have a Bible study course that you can start. Six weeks course. You pass it. You get a certificate, cup, t-shirt, all that kind of stuff. Let's take a break in a moment to pray. Everybody bow their heads in prayer. Father Yah, we thank you for this moment of prayer. 
Father, we thank you for giving us the opportunity, giving us the opportunity to have the choice to sit down and open your word. For your word saves, delivers, set free to those who read it and also to those who hear it. So, Father, for all your listeners out there, we ask that if they're struggling with covetedness, that you will break every yoke and every chain and every spirit that comes along with covetedness. We send it all back to dry places in the name of Yahushua. Father, I pray that you will touch the heart of every listener out there. Shema, o Israel, the Lord our God is one. Lead, guide, guard, govern, protect, and order our footsteps on this day. Father, I ask that you will give us a fresh anointing for your word. Fill us with your wisdom, your knowledge, and understanding. Not to just let us read your word, but to allow us to understand what we're reading. In the name of Yahushua, Hamashiach, we pray. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters. Another dynamic Bible study. God bless you. Y'all bless you. Shalom. See you next week.